welcome everybody to my first ever YouTube video uh, for 11 plus. Um, I'm going to be talking today about algebra and it's one of my favourite topics and I love it uh, because it actually comes up, This it's a subtopic of substitution which comes up in the maths and also in the verbal reasoning. So it's an important one uh, to look at. Uh, and I'm also going to say a few quick words as well. It is going to be short videos. Um, I will talk briefly about other subjects within the algebra as well because algebra is connected to maths, which is connected to lots of other subtopics. Um, and obviously I can't cover everything in the short space that I have, but I'll cover as much of the topic as I can. Okay, uh, beginning straight away, I'm going to launch in. Uh, with the first thing, which is that algebra is easy. And it's something very important to remember when you're doing algebra, because if you understand that it's easy, then you can always approach it and think to yourself, I can do this, I can give it a go. Okay, so uh, with substitution in particular, it's important to understand what does it mean? Well, you may have heard about it in football or netball. Substituting is when you bring in one player and replace them with another. So you're bringing in a new, but maybe the other player on the pitch or on the on the netball court has been injured and they have to come off and then a new player is substituted on. In maths, it's very similar. What we do is we replace a letter with a number. So in this case, um, I've given you some letters and I've said they're equal to certain numbers. Okay, so I've said I'm going to let A equal 1, B equal 2, C equal 3, D equal 10, and E equal 100. Now it's quite important to understand I could have picked any number, I could have picked any letter, it didn't matter. I've just picked those for now uh, and we're going to work with them. Okay, so the first question says, what is A plus B plus C plus D plus E? Now some of you may be looking at all of these questions thinking, ah, oh, this is very easy, I can do it in five seconds. If that's the case, please pause the video and absolutely please do them on your own and then you can have a quick look at the answers. Um, if you're not sure, please have a listen in. Okay, so A we know is 1, so I'm going to write down 1, plus we know that B is 2, so I'm going to write down 2, plus we know that C is 3, I'm going to write that in, plus we know that D is 10 and E is 100. Okay, so some quick maths here, uh, 100%, 110, plus the 6, 116. And here we have the answer, 116. Okay, let's have a look at this one, AB plus CD plus AE. Now, the interesting thing here is, what does AB mean? Well, it means A times B, I'm going to just write it down here, A times B equals AB. Well, you might ask. Why didn't they write A times B? Well, the reason is, is because that sometimes looks like an X. So they don't write it in algebra. They just write AB when they mean A times B. Okay, so now that we know that, let's work out what AB is. We need to work out A times B. So that would be 1 times 2. Let's write that in. 1 times 2. And then we're adding C times D. 3 times 10. And then we're adding A times E, which is 1 times 100. There we go. Now let's see if we can work that out. Quick maths. Here we go. 100 plus 30 plus 2. 132. If you followed that, you're amazing. Maths is easy. Algebra is easy, well done. Okay, the next one, BC divided by D. Got a division thrown in there. Is it any trickier? No, still just as easy. Let's have a go. B times C, D times three. Divided by D, we know D is 10. Let's write that down. So that is six divided by 10. We could leave the answer like that. Sometimes they'll say reduce it to its lowest form. In that case, you would divide top and bottom by two 
which will give us three fifths. That's a bit of equivalent fractions. I will be looking at that on a different video. Okay, so here we go, there's a lovely fraction. If they had asked for the answer as a decimal, then we would need to look at six tenths and see if we can work that out. So we do six divided by 10. And again, we will do a separate section on decimals, but that's 0 0.6. Well done if you knew that. Um, okay, so the next one. B, C, D, E divided by A. Let's take a look at that. So B is 2 times C, which is 3, times D, which is 10, times E, which is 100, divided by A, which is 1. Now I'm going to talk about that. When you divide by 1, the answer is just itself. So let me give you an example. 6 divided by 1 is just 6. 7 divided by 1 is 7. 8 divided by 1 is 8. So whatever this is, divided by 1, is just going to be that answer. So we didn't really need to write that down. If we know we're dividing by 1, we can just leave it as it is. Does that make sense? So it's a bit of a time-saving uh, time thing to remember when you're working these out. Okay, so let's work this out. 2 times 3, 6. Times 10, 60. Times 100, 6,000. Okay, there we have it, the answers to those questions. If you did pause the video and work that out yourself and you got those correct, well done. You are amazing, absolutely brilliant. Um, okay, so that's what I'm going to say about substitution. The other thing I'm going to mention is a few learning points that we may or may not have picked up during the course of this video, which are quite important. We're going to pop them there just so you can see them. The first thing, whenever you do a question at 11 plus, is always to think, well, what have I learned from this? What have I understood? How can I apply this going forward? And one of the learning points is to always remember speed. Always look at things that you can do to do things quicker, uh, especially with maths, uh, and make sure that you're thinking about it as you do the question. Do things as quickly as you possibly can. Learn your times tables well. Now this is really important. You need this. It's important to understand that 11 plus, you need to be fast, accurate with your times tables. Without that level of accuracy, it is difficult to answer enough questions quickly to pass. So it is good to practice your times tables whenever you can and to keep learning them and get quicker and quicker. You can always get quicker with your times tables. Look for shortcuts. Now, this is very important with 11 plus questions. Look for shortcuts. If there's a quicker way of doing it, always do it. Do not write down workings. Now, this is an interesting one because as you get older and you do your GCSEs, it's important to understand that you will be asked to show your workings. And even for those children who are doing the independent school tests, they will be asked to show their workings and they do have to learn to be able to show their workings. But for 11 plus, you don't have time. You don't have time to write it all out. So you have to do it all in your head. So it's an important distinction to understand that 11 plus, you actually don't write your workings, but in other tests, you probably will need to. Okay? So when you sit down and have the correct mindset that you're going to be focused on timing and going to be doing it quickly. So let's take a look at these questions very quickly just to see how we might do them in our heads. Okay, so let's say we had BC divided by D. So you quickly look at me, 2 times 3, which is 6, divided by 10, which is 0 0.6. You just quickly do it in your head. I know I've written it out here, but that's to show you how to do it. Um, but in the real test, remember, just work it out and Bob's your uncle, or not, as the case may be. Okay, um, having said this, I am going to mention one more thing, which is very important as well. If you have understood this, well done. You are amazing. And it's something to remember at all times. Every time you understand something, remember you've done really well, you're amazing, and most importantly in this particular case, algebra is easy. Okay, well done and, um, and I hope to see you soon. Okay, bye.